the NBA All-Star Weekend mean to you? It's mostly a lot of fun, right? We, uh, we do a lot of work most weekends, but this is a fun one because a lot of friends come together. It's mostly about slam dunks and skills contests and then the best players in the game getting out there and playing a lot of offense. So given how popular this weekend is, mm -hmm. the personalities, the events, those who say sports television, live sports is in a bubble, it's going to burst, it just costs too much, uh -huh. they're crazy? Uh, I think they're wrong. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to characterize their mental state, but I would suggest that their judgment is wrong. Sports rights continue to appreciate. We're invested in the long-term value of live sports. We had last year one of our best rating years in the history of our company, and I think it speaks to the value of live rights in this environment. Now, I've got my phone with me. My tablet is uh, in the bag. Uh, How do you watch this stuff? Uh, How many screens do you have? Well, well, we actually have, we produce about four or five hours per hour. So actually just sitting One more here. Time? Basically there's more than 24 hours in a day. Oh yeah, we right. produce many more hours than there are hours in the day. So I'm consistently falling behind uh, on what I can watch. And by the way, that's why you can watch it on your smartphone. You can watch it on your tablet. is so that people can watch sports whenever they would like to. That's the must now. Give it to them how they want it, where they want it, when they want yeah, it. Particularly since it's live, right? If you're going to watch the game and you're here at the Tech Summit, you're at a dinner party, or uh, you're you know, in a business meeting and you want to slip down and see what the score is or catch a highlight, we want to make sure you can get that. And how do you maintain your position, your edge, seeing that there are more and more platforms offering sports? Uh, well, we're going to maintain our position edge by the aggregation of sports right we have, rights we have, continuing to present them to fans wherever they want to get them, whenever they want to get them, adopting technology so that when new things come along, they're still branded ESPN, partnering with, partnering with social media companies and technology companies to make sure that when people watch sports on Facebook, they're watching on an ESPN video player. When they go to Snapchat and look at sports content, they're looking on their new discovery platform at ESPN content. That, that's kind of how we think about that. If everybody thinks the bubble, the folks who know about these things tell me where we're headed mm -hmm. is individualized advertisement. Mm -hmm. They will know whether, because if you're a partner with Facebook or uh -huh. Twitter, they'll know who's watching. They'll know when they're watching. They know what they want. They know what they'll uh -huh. buy. So that would suggest that there's still lots more money out there to be associated with the sports world. Look, we think that, uh, one, the fact that it's live and you can aggregate the audience where most audiences are now aggregated over three days or seven days or 30 days makes it valuable for advertising. Clearly more data and rich data will make it more, more uh, uh, valuable for advertisers. And we have an opportunity to do that because fans identify their favorite teams. They identify their fantasy players so that we can know enough things. We can identify geography, age, in order to help advertisers reach their targets more precisely. Given all this rich data you have now, um, who should you be targeting next? What demographic isn't tuning in that you want to go after? Well, we're after every demographic. <laughs> we did just announce yesterday a new website that will be about race, politics, and sports uh, called The Undefeated with Jason Whitlock because that African-American audience is very important to us. We have our W initiative because the female sports audience is very important to us. You know that we've been engaged in a high priority for U.S. Hispanic fans uh, to watch sports uh, and watch ESPN. We want to serve all fans. We are, uh, we're, we're, we're not anxious to exclude anybody. And you went and got the World Cup of Hockey after mm -hmm. letting the NHL uh, go. It seems as if uh, in, in basketball parlance, maybe this is an aggressive four corners. You're, you're, uh, you're aggressively acquiring, but then you're keeping uh, everybody else out. You want all the live rights because you know that's where the we, eyeballs are. We, we believe in the value of live rights. You know, you're using basketball parlance. You know, in basketball parlance, you guys are double teaming me here. <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can handle this here for a few more minutes and get, get you out. You've got a height advantage. I think you're okay. Uh, you're right. I do have a height advantage. I'm going to shoot over you. I post her up, may go off the dribble. Uh. How about team valuations? When we talk about media rights, we've got the Nets for sale. Uh, we've seen Steve mm. Ballmer just step in in California. Do you think there's a bubble there? No, I don't think there's a bubble there. Look, there's like, it's like suggesting that there's a bubble for Vermeer paintings or real estate in Malibu, right? <laughs> there's very limited supply. The NBA, I want all those the things. NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball are the best, most exclusive clubs in the world. I mean, people want to, to, uh, to be in those clubs, so the value of those clubs is going to continue to appreciate. So you asked David Levy, what do you want? And he said, I want the NFL. Uh -huh. And the value proposition there is still high. People say, oh, you had all the off-field tarnish. 
nothing sticks. Did anything stick? Was there any effect to the NFL and its partners? I, look, I think that they rightly are quite concerned about making sure they handle these issues, protect the shield, and I think they're in the process of doing that. And I think Rogers made the moves with new hires and new initiatives to do that. So, yeah, I don't think anybody takes those things lightly. I do think most fans separate the game on the field and the off-field issues. And the off-field issues, to your point, have not affected how they like the game on the field or on the screen. Well, you know what they also love? They love betting on the stuff, let's be honest. They love to bet and fantasy. Mm -hmm. ESPN has said it will get involved in some way mm. in daily fantasy. And we know Adam Silver is now proposing that Congress uh -huh. legalize sports gambling. How do you benefit? Look, we, we benefit any time there is increased interest in sports. And as people play fantasy games or have a daily game of skill they're engaged in, uh, and I hear there's some betting going on. I'm not personally aware of any of it, but I hear there's some going on. When people have an interest in a game, it makes them more interested in the game. And that's good for us. But will they, will they be betting via ESPN portal? I, will they be playing I, daily fantasy on a, a partnership level through ESPN? We're, we're very engaged in fantasy. We're very engaged in daily games. You will not see anybody betting on an ESPN portal. What's the, what's the pool? Tell me, what do you think is the pool of money out there in you, this? You it, know, it's an I, untapped revenue source that the owners are dying to get their hands on. You know, I do know that the lottery was $500 million the other day, and that is a kind of form of uh, wagering. So the pool is vast. It's billions of dollars. I actually don't know the answer to that question uh, um, specifically, but it's obviously a vast, vast pool. If Time Warner Comcast goes through, what does that mean for ESPN? Uh, we're, we're partners with Comcast and we're partners with Time Warner and we'll be good partners with Comcast Time Warner. I don't think it's that profound for us. We pay attention uh, to it and uh, we, we haven't publicly commented on it particularly, but uh, uh, I, I don't have a strong opinion. Is that because you've got the winning hand and no matter who you're partnered with, everybody wants uh, to watch I, ESPN? I think it's certainly the case that we've built a very valuable uh, aggregation of content. Nobody denies that the ESPN network and networks are the most valuable content in the pay television universe. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that does provide us some comfort that the, those companies, however large they become, will want the ESPN content. Now, what's the next big sports rights contract you've got your eye on? What do you want to put on ESPN that isn't there already? Well, you, you mentioned already the World Cup of Hockey. I mean, we're very, very excited about that uh, in 16. We've got the European Championships in 16 of, uh, of uh, European football, which we're excited about. We're excited about this NBA deal. We're excited about all of our rights deals. It's like children. We're, we're, uh, we're, we like them all. But he, lo like he, loves, the, he loves the NFL the most. Why, <laughs> why is it that hockey can't get, the, can't get as sticky, can't get as popular, can't push as much product as Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA? What's missing? Well, well look, these are all popular leagues. The NHL is traditionally a really, really strong league in big markets, New York, Boston, Chicago, Detroit. They have a, in, are in the process of spreading that popularity to other parts of the country. I admire what they've done. I, we would like to be in the NHL. We jumped at this chance to be in the World Cup of Hockey because we admire what they're doing and we want to be their partner.